You have chosen some anime characters and I'm going to look into their kimono or bafuku Japanese garment outfits and analyze them as a professional kimono teacher. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. And you have given me some kimono characters, kimono characters, some characters that wear kimono or other Japanese garments to look into and analyze. The original plan was to actually probably watch those anime and find proper scenes I can talk about. But you know, this month has been so busy that I just didn't get around to do it. And I really want to post this video this month. It's already the 29th, I think. And oh my gosh, I only have like one day to finish off this video. Anyway, let's jump right into it. But I also have to mention, keep in mind that kimono or Japanese garments has a long history. It is a really, really wild field with many different areas and no one can specialize in all of it. And since I didn't have any time to properly research, you will get 100% Billy knowledge and we will see how much I actually can analyze all those outfits with what I only have in my head. Anyway, let's find some place where I can sit and set up my PC and let's get started. <sighs> I haven't set foot into this room for quite a long while, by the way. <laughs> the first character or the most popular character was actually Yuko Ichihara from XXXholic. We are going to look at the kimono in the first episode because I have to admit I'm a huge clump fan and I embarrassingly haven't watched this one yet and <laughs> I really don't want to spoil myself so we're just going to look into the first episode. I'm actually now in episode three that's how much I went in so I have some things I want to talk about but let's especially focus on this kimono she wears in the first episode. So you can definitely feel that this is inspired by this modern aesthetic of oiran. Oiran are the actually ladies of joy of Japanese of the Japanese past. They did not look like this at all in history, but somewhere, and that would be for me a really interesting research itself, when it actually started to look like this, because you can have, you can go to different studios that actually offer a oida makeover, and this is how you're gonna look like. I don't think it's a bad thing at, at all, but you have to keep in mind that this is not historically accurate, and this is just an aesthetic and a style by itself. I find it very sexy and I love it very much. By the way, the pipe she's um, smoking is called Kiseru in Japanese. This is a really interesting shot for me, so you can see really well what she is wearing. She's definitely not wearing a proper undergarment, a so-called juban. She's skipping that one and she's replacing it with a tight-fitted short dress. When looking at the neckline, I'm 100% sure this is actually a normal Western clothes style dress. And over that, she is probably wearing three layers of kimono. She wears two kimono that have this rather Bordeaux, uh, purple, violet, <laughs> reddish. I would, by the way, say in Japanese, this is just koki iro. This, this color has a name. And then on top of that, she wears one layer of this super nice red kimono. You can see it's definitely at least two layers with one under layer and one top layer because you can actually see the the sleeve here kind of extends so you can see that there is this top layer that is separate from the under layers because sometimes kimono are made that it looks like it's more layers but it's actually just one kimono and I think it's two under layers because this top layer definitely has no lining. You can't see any lining peeking out anywhere. So it's an unlined kimono and you would not put together a lined kimono and then put an unlined kimono on top. This is just 
it's not a rule but it's it doesn't make sense it's not common sense of kimono because it's two different seasons it's like when you would wear a, a snow trousers and then actually a t-shirt on top and you're not snowboarding you're just walking through that through the city you're just mixing up weird seasons and you shouldn't do that i think it's three online kimono that makes the most sense to me and you can also see that she is skipping the second tie. So for kimono, you always need two ties. You need one on the hip that is called koshi himo. And then you have a second one under the chest that is called muna himo. And muna means actually chest. And the chest tie is actually there to kind of hold the kimono here on front not close because it does the kimono by itself but you just want to hold the collar properly in place that is what is actually happening and she's skipping that so she can extend the collar around her chest and then it will go all the way back down um, as she was wearing it like so you can see that she's wearing like a tiny bit the kimono rather here on her shoulder it's not really off shoulder it's here on her shoulder and that is really how it would look like when you would skip the second uh, tie you can do this style one by one this is exactly how it should look like so one thing i really have to mention is that her collar is way too stiff for this style um she definitely had some really stiff interfacing sewed into the collar so it will actually extend and stand like this. It would not sit like this at all. But yeah, when you put some interfacing in, this is possible. So it's, this is not undoable. <laughs> So the only thing that I find really, really off-putting in this style is probably the obi. So the obi is tied in a so-called hikimusubi. That is a obi musubi that was worn by younger oiran. This is okay how it looks like and how this is styled is fine. But like the ends of the obi that are coming out here this is just way too narrow i mean lengthwise yes you probably need probably a seven meter ob or longer this is possible but it it's the ends peeking out so actually they would have to be like in the same width as the ob as the bow width actually is um also this ob musubi is also not tied like a regular bow so i think this might be also just some decoration they have stuffed in there so it's probably a two-piece ob so if you wanted to recreate that you wanted to do a two-piece ob also you can see here yes she's wearing a hikizuri hikizuri or kimono is that are dragged over the floor when walking and yeah besides that it looks like a really decent outfit you can really properly wear this as it is wrap up of ichihara yuko is definitely doable um it looks very very accurate although i'm not grading accuracy because it's an anime but it looks it's just really well made um you need three layers of kimono probably use a two-piece obi and scrap the undergarment and do a tight fitted dress i by the way actually really love that ichihara yuko has this western japanese style mixture because in another episode i think it was episode three she actually wears a corset and over the corset she actually wears a, a obijime and she has those fringes coming out of the kimono here and there which shows that she definitely had a probably rather western style undergarment under it made for exactly that kimono to look exactly that way there is also a real life action movie that i haven't watched yet because i don't want to spoil myself but what i've seen on pictures so far they rather went the full oiran route with the uh, oiran makeover style which i find really really sad because when you do that you don't do a mix of western style and japanese style it's only gonna be one of those styles but i think that she's actually mixing up western style and japanese clothing is actually one of her characteristics and should be properly done which they didn't really do 
in the real life action movie, at least from what I have seen on pictures. Might be somewhere in the movie, I haven't watched it yet, so I should not really um, give an opinion on it. But yes, let's move on to the next character. So the next character that was high rated is Princess Kaguya from the Ghibli movie, Princess Kaguya. Why is it fairy tale of Princess Kaguya? I have to stress out that the fairy tale of Princess Kaguya, or better said Taketori Monogatari, as the original is called in Japanese, was written during a time when the very famous Japanese imperial court gowns, the so-called Juni Hitoe, wasn't evolved yet. Hasn't been evolved yet. Hadn't been evolved yet. Just take a tense you like. Which means the depiction or the image of Princess Kaguya wearing a Juni Doe is actually incorrect because the author who wrote Kaguya Hime or Taketa, Taketori Monogatari did not have a Juni Doe in mind when creating the character itself. The problem is we don't really know what was worn before Junish Doem. Even like the court gowns in Nara period, they're likely guessed from pictures of gods and goddesses that are left in temples and some textiles that are left in the treasures of Shosoin temple and some literature. But we do not exactly know what was worn in Nara period until Junish Doe, we have no concrete idea what was actually worn. Concrete, that's not the right word. That was so German. Eine konkrete Idee. Let's just put it on screen. <laughs> and what I really like about this movie is that they made it really, really smart. So they gave the people on Earth the actual garment we know that was worn, Junichto and other court gowns, and also what the broader populations or like the ordinary people wear in this movie is something we kind of know was worn because we know that from pictures that are left from that time, from the Heian period, the latter half of the Heian period. And they gave the gods, spoiler alert, who po pop up in the end of the movie, they gave the gods the garments that we know from pictures of the Nada period. There is this one specific scene, again, spoiler alert, Princess Kaguya says why she knows this one song, because there was this one person on the moon who always looked down on earth a tiny bit sadly and singing the song. And you can see this one goddess and she is wearing what we know from pictures from Nada period of goddesses. They kind of kept it simple. They gave the gods and goddesses what we know they wore and they gave the people on earth the closest we know what was worn. <laughs> so the costumes I actually want to look into is the one she wears under the Jari Blossom tree because I think that's the one the most iconic uh, scene because it was also used for the trailers at that time. I, by the way, do believe that it would seriously look like that when you run in a um, Junichto or anything else. All this fabric bunching up around you because it's also quite stiff fabric. So, yeah, I seriously believe it actually would look like that. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like she's only wearing three layers in this outfit. She is wearing a white corsode as the first bottom layer as the undergarment. On top of that, she wears a hakama, a red hakama. Um, and on top of that, she wears two layers of uchiki. This outfit is called ku uchiki actually, and it was actually really worn like that. Kosode, hakama and uchiki. The hakama should be a nagabakama because in the past it was really or in ham period feet were not really exposed so there's a tiny bit nod yeah i would say how she's running there around with a kiribakama kiribakama are hakama that are shorter and the really really long ones are called nagabakama but you know what i don't know what those people were outside of the palace so could have been a kiribakama too I don't really know, to be honest. 
Yeah, you can beautifully see how the osode are made. So this is a kosode, meaning that the sleeve opening here of a regular kimono today is really, really short. This is where the name kosode, small sleeves, actually comes from. It comes from the small sleeve opening. And also they have it open all the way down to the bottom. You can still see them in garments at shrines and also in Junichtoe because osode was actually more of a thing. And kosode is rather the uh, what poor people wore. With the color of the hakama, I'm not 100% happy because she would be required to wear a koki iro hakama. We just talked about koki iro. <laughs> when I talked about Ichihara Yuko, her under kimono, the color, this is what color I wanted to see on her. Uh, this color is for me right a tiny bit hard to mm, place. It's not really beni iro. Beni iro was then the color that was worn by women when they got married and had their first child. You needed a first child, by the way, to actually be able to wear this really, really kudenai, this benito, this red hakama. And um, yeah, before that, it was koki iro. Yes, so it's two layers of uchiki. The top layer, of course, has a really nice pattern with the flowers on it. By the way, kosode at when Kaguya Hime lived would not have been a thing. Um, she would have been rather naked. <laughs> anyway, okay, this was Kaguya Hime. Let's move on to the next <laughs> character. Um, let me look up which character it actually was. Okay, so the next character is Daki from Kimetsu no Yaiba, Demon Slayer. <laughs> So I haven't been watching Demon Slayer at all and I have no idea who Ducky is, to be honest. <laughs> oh, beautiful hair. Oh, yeah. Don't ask me how accurate this could be because there were a lot of different Oidan style hairstyles for Oiran. And there were also trendsetters in Japanese culture, so. And she's obviously wearing three layers of kimono with a juban, kimono, and a uchikake on top. So the obi. I don't know this name of Obi Musubi for Oiran. Um, it looks a tiny bit like Yanagi Musubi or a Hitotsu Musubi that you can see very often on Geisha. This is seriously how it looks like to me. I have seen pictures, very, very old pictures of Oiran actually wearing this style. So this was a style for sure. I just don't know the name of it. Could I tie it? I, I could tie it. <laughs> I'm hungry. So the outfit she wears in general, she wears a juban and over that she wears a hikizuri kimono um, that would be like a, uh, how did you always call it? I can't talk right now. What was the name of it? The word slipped my mind because I also barely say it because this type of kimono you can wear or that are worn under a uchikake um, have so many different names and they're basically all the same. There is no difference in them. <laughs> so when you get a, just a normal uh, hikizuri kimono, you can wear all of them under uh, uchikake as long as the sleeve length fits. You can just wear that. I call it just shtagi for a second. So she wears the shtagi kimono that is also hikizuri kimono. On top she wears the obi. And over all of that, she is putting the so-called uchikake. This is a style that actually evolved, I think, in the Kamakura period. This uchikake style among the samurai class. And rather later in history, also aristocrats like the family of the emperor were starting to wear this style too. They would not call it uh, uch uchikake, they called it uh, kaitori. 
<laughs> it is the exact same thing. They just gave it a different name because, you know, they wanted to di differentiate them or to distance themselves from the samurai culture. And th what those um, princesses wore at one time or the samurai um, wives wore at one time, of course, spread out in the Edo period. And today you can see it in bridal kimono style. This is what I actually wore on my bridal pictures, on my wedding pictures. And you see it also worn um, on stage uh, in kabuki place. This exactly this style, very accurate, um, also nicely designed. I think Kimetsu just really has a really nice and accurate, perfect character design. The flowers she has on her outfits are very modern, modern kimono um, patterns. You rather would see this in a um, rather 20s, 30s kimono outfit, what she is wearing as a pattern on the kimono. But I mean, she's a demon, so why not? Also, the makeup, of course, is not how it was done at that time. Like her, um, her eyebrows are just, um, that's also right to modern. It didn't look like that in the past, but you know, it's an anime, so who cares? Beautiful character design. I just really love her whole outfit. It is completely accurate how she has it on. That's why I don't really have to, a lot to say about it in the end, because this is just really a regular kimono outfit and was worn like this, is still worn like this, so not a lot to say about her. The next character we're going to talk about is Seishomaru from Inuyasha. And thank you everyone for putting him into this because he's one of my absolute favorite anime characters of all time. I mean, look at him, he's gorgeous. Anyway, Seishomaru. Seishomaru. <laughs> Seisho Maru. Seisho Maru's outfit, or let's say in general the outfits in Inuyasha, keep in mind it's a fantasy world. That is why we're not really looking for accuracy here, okay? Also I have to say Inuyasha makes me cringe even though I'm not looking for any accuracy, but it's a fantasy world so most of the outfits are not real outfits. They're inspired by, but they're not real outfits. And to make that clear, that speaks for every single anime and manga out there. Just because a Japanese person painted, draw or wrote this one doesn't mean that they know exactly how the garment is constructed, how the garment should look like. And sometimes they just really make their own designs, which I find really, really cool. And I think that is actually what cosplaying should be about. And that is, by the way, also what I want to see in real life action movies when they make one. We're not gonna talk about that today. That can be a different video. In case you wanna see that, tell me down below in the comments. What Seishomaru is wearing is really interesting. So he obviously wears a undergarment. I think it's a tsutsusode undergarment because you cannot see the undergarment sleeves peeking out somewhere of from under the kimono. So it's a tsutsusode undergarment, something I have made in one of my previous videos in case you want to look into that. And over that, he's wearing a kimono layer that has rather long sleeves which I really like because it gives it a really n nice touch, I think, with the longer sleeves. I would not necessarily say this is a female style because even boys in the past would wear furisode, a long sleeved kimono. So it's not necessarily a really, really female style or anything. I was trying to find out if his kimono actually has a footy, which means the side here on the sleeve that is right next to the body is actually open. That is an indicator for a female kimono. It's obviously completely closed, which is by the way period accurate for this drop anime when you want to place it into a period. I think this one was Murumachi period, I will have to look it up again. But this is period accurate because Fudi did not evolve until end of Edo period. So very period accurate in general. And then over this kimono, he's wearing a sashinuki bakama, which is a hakama that you can tie up at the bottom. So it, it, it bulks out. And those sashinuki bakama were worn for several garments by men. 
And in Japanese period dramas, you can actually see sometimes they're tied up and sometimes they're not tied up, which I find really cool because it shows again just that this was there to make this garment a tiny bit more practical so you could actually fight in it or ride on a horse in it. On top of that, he's wearing a yoroi. And I have to be honest, yoroi is not my, my strong foot. I have no idea about yoroi. I'm pretty sure that the this type of yoroi uh, has a specific name. I don't know it. On top of this yoroi, he has this spiky thing and also this kind of scarf. Um, yes, this is pure character design. This is nothing that is somehow in any way super, super accurate. And he also wears this obi on top. I would call that obi. I don't know how it's tied and how it's kind of constructed and what it's actually there for. I would also say this is some type of character design. When recreating this, keep in mind this is a pure made up outfit. Like even the kimono with the sashinuki bakama, I was thinking about could this be a suo? Well, but so have all sorted, which means the full sleeve here is open. It's uh, it's really hard to tell what this actually is because it's completely made up. And how it's painted, it's very accurately painted, which means this draw out of this outfit is completely possible. You just would wear a tsutsu sode undergarment with the kimono sleeve probably here on the front. And then you would put wear just a shorter kimono on top that probably goes down until your knees length. That's like the kimono layer. Um, if you can find or make it by yourself, just make the sleeves a tiny bit longer, but it's like a regular men's um, kimono design or like construction, just shorter. And then you would just make a sashinuki bakama and you would wear that on top. And then over that, you would have to construct the yoroi. And then you would put this really long obi like thing on top that i would still call obi because it's an obi for me but yeah this is just basically the design that he wears it is not accurate or anything it is made up but it's really really nicely made up that's why it looks so accurate <laughs> i'm looking at the sleeves openings right now and yeah again no lining like somehow they always skip the lining usually on kimono you can see the lining peeking out here at the very end you can see here is my lining that was always put in like that on purpose to kind of uh, protect the outer layer from any kind of damage or like dirt so again an unlined garment <laughs> i think that just goes through all the anime because i think this tiny detail is really hard to animate okay that was already Seisho Maru. And let's go into the last character I have for today's video, and that is Lady Eboshi from Mononoke Hime, Princess Mononoke. Again, with Princess Mononoke, keep in mind, this is a fantasy world. This is not really supposed to play in a specific period of time. I think I have once read an interview from uh, Hayao Miyazaki and he actually I think stated that even because Ashitaka is definitely some something like Jomon Jidai and um, th the country we are later in with Lady Iboshi is probably Murumachi Jidai I think that is where they get their inspiration from but again it is not a period drama it is a fantasy movie so you can tell that she is wearing again two layers of kimono so she is wearing a undergarment layer which we have seen a lot so far this is a juban and then she wears a kosode or a kimono on top and you can even see this is the same color as the undergarment layer so this could be either lining or the actual undergarment so you can see it has the long sleeves going up to the front and then on top of that she is not wearing a haori it looks like a haori but i would say this is rather close to an uchikake what she's wearing 
on top of that. Oh, and of course the Hakama, I completely jumped over the Hakama. In the Muromachi period, I just said that incorrectly earlier in this video, in the Muromachi period, the um, Uchikake style has evolved for samurai princesses or like wealthy samurai wives. This is not a Uchikake for sure, but it's definitely taking some inspiration out of that. At that time, what men wore was like suo, diamond, hitatare, katakinu. These were styles I would actually wear. So what she's wearing there for me, this looks really close to what you can see later on in Edo period, for example, what fire fighters wore in the Edo period. The hakama also is just a regular trousers type hakama. As you could see in the movie Princess Kaguya, she was also just wearing a kosode with a hakama that is a trousers type hakama. So it's not a very male style or it's not really a, a statement, I think, itself wearing a kosode with a hakama. This is not super manly. For me, this is rather like making a status, making a point, shows that she has the money to wear more layers. It shows that she is the one who's able to wear a hakama because ordinary women could not wear a hakama. It would be aristocrats, it would be samurai. That is, that, those are those people who could wear hakama. So this is just for me making a real statement, like she's still dressed like a leader of a village or a town. She's dressed like a leader of a country. This is what I see from that. <laughs> you could just see that her zori, she's definitely wear normal zori that are still made out of straw. Like real zori are made out of straw. That's why you also write zori as they're written. They're written with uh, haku, which is what you use for putting on shoes. And zo is uh, grass. So because this was the beginning of zori actually. Yeah, oh, really nice Saudi. Ah, yeah, just Ghibli, they just do their homework, you can tell. Also, with the black tabi already existed in Muromachi, did I think? Yeah, with the tabi with the splitted toe. Before that, there was no splitted toe. But I do remember that tabi actually in the shape they exist today. Um, is already for quite a very long time. So you can see this is not a uchikake for sure because for, for uchikake the collar doesn't go down all the way to the bottom of the garment like it does here. It's an ibamoyo which means the pattern here goes over the seam which means the seam was uh, the pattern was dyed on a woven in in a way so you can connect it when you actually sew it together. This is no style that I have ever seen in Japanese historical garments itself on samurai or on ordinary people in any way. This is just nothing I have ever seen so far and again I think it just took some um, inspiration of, of uchikake but with the coloring and thing again it just looks to me like an Edo period firefighter <laughs> but i should mention for the Edo period firefighters their um coats they wore on top were way way shorter than this one here is that's why i want to place it into a uchikake i mean look from look at it from behind yeah it, it looks like a really short uchikake with having the the collar so down to the hem <laughs> but also the back collar of this which kake how would you like what they have here on top is like really really wide it should sit rather a tiny bit closer on the kimono collar this is just how a garment wants to sit usually i also received a lot of questions about the actual sleeves because as we all know kimono sleeves look like this and it looks very often like round sleeves so in general in the past round sleeves existed in japan and um i don't know why a lot of anime but also video games kind of do not properly animate the sleeves and make it rather a round sleeve it's probably easier to animate or I just really don't know. They just don't do it. So also with the sleeves, 
of Lady Eboshi's outfit. This is not, as I already stated, a really accurate garment because I'm having harsh troubles to trouble to actually identify this garment into something and historical kimono is like my specialty <laughs> and I cannot identify this one. This is all I can say about Lady Eboshi for me again a very straightforward style although I don't really know what the actual top layer is um, but I can see where it's taken its um, inspiration from which is definitely Uchikake style and Uchiki style which we both have already seen the Uchiki style in form of Princess Kaguya and we had the Uchikake style the Oiran Uchikake style of Daki so definitely is taking some inspiration from that at least for me it looks like that in general, what we have seen today are, for me, really accurate depictions of kimono. I mean, there were some tiny things like how stiff can the collar be? How wide is the OB? You can see me here and there. I'm kind of like, oh. But you know, it's character design and it's supposed to be like that. So I'm fine with that. In general, these are just really, really tiny details. I don't think they have to get right. So far, really, really nice uh, character designs, all of them. Um, I'm definitely gonna go and watch some more episodes of XXXHolic now. Um, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave me a thumb up, tell me in the comments, share this video probably with your friends. This would really help me out a lot. If you're new here and you want to learn about kimono from a professional kimono tailor, feel free to subscribe. I would be really happy to have you here. Again, if you want to see more videos like this, about specific anime, please tell me also down below in the comments. I would really love to know. And also let's see how well this video actually does. Have a wonderful day and I talk to you in my next Kimono adventure. Bye.